So hey guys and welcome to the 6.2 Boomkin guide, baby. So yeah, Boomkins, they didn't really change much. Alright, from 6.1 to 6.2, our abilities have been nerfed slightly, but our mastery was buffed. So overall, we actually got buffed, alright? It's not a nerf. Uh, mastery is very strong, and since mastery is our strongest stat, it was actually a buff. And another change is with Starfall, if we use Starfall over here, you can now clip it with the last three seconds remaining. Alright, if I use Starfall now, it will jump to 13 seconds instead of 10. And you can now use Starfalls to override them. So be careful about that, because that never was a thing. Alright, you couldn't use Starfall if you had Starfall running, so now you can, so be a bit more cautious. Alright, don't push that Starfall button too many times. Now, Beamkins have been in high demand since Warlord's launch, because we can do something that no other class can. We can AoE whatever we want, as long as it is within 40 yards of us, and we can still do decent single target damage while AoEing. Alright, and that's very cool, that is very cool indeed. And no other class can do that. Alright, most classes need the mobs to be stacked up, so things like hands on Chromog, and, you know, balconies on black hand, that's just Boomkin's heaven. Because no other class can AoE down ads that are so far away from each other very effectively. So Boomkin's good. Alright, in the new Citadel, there are more single target focus fights, but Boomkin's are still good because of Starfall and because of Dots and because of the toolkit we have, like Soothe and Typhoon and Roots and all of that. It's just very good. Alright, Boomkin's are just alright right now. Now, the first thing is the rotation, and the rotation is not that difficult, alright? The fundamentals are very simple, alright? Use Star Search in Lunar Eclipse if you're not capped in Solar Eclipse, alright? That's the big thing, alright? We don't really want to use Star Search in Solar Eclipse because rats are generally weaker than uh, Starfires, and three empowered rats will do less damage than two empowered Starfires. So, your rotation is very simple, alright? A, you want to keep Moonfire and Sunfire up as close to 100% uptime as possible. And B, you want to cast the correct spells, which is Starfire in, Sol uh, in Lunar, Wrath in Solar. And then we want to use Star Surges in Lunar as long as we're not getting capped in Solar, alright? So it's not a sin, alright, if, if we just start the combat again, make the training dummy very angry. If you go to Solar, and suddenly you're like, oh damn, I have three star surges. Just throw the damn thing out. If I'm here, I'm like, okay, I have three star surges. Let's just throw one out. It doesn't matter, all right? It's better to use it in solar rather than waste a potential proc in uh, lunar, all right? Because, you know, star surges are very good. Or even star falls, all right? They're just very good. And you don't want to waste any proc. So if you are in solar, where you shouldn't really be using star surges. If you're about to cap to three, just use it and let it regenerate. You always want your star surge charges regenerating and you always want room for that RNG proc that gives you another charge. All right, that, that's very important. Now, another thing is you should kind of get an add-on to track your Eclipse bar. You don't have to if you're very comfortable with the default really tiny one, but I'm using Balance Power Tracker, I will put a link to that in the description. And what this does is it shows me where I will end up once I cast a spell. And that is, that is really good for training and for timing things, alright? Because what you want to do is, as you're casting spells, you don't really want to do this. Alright, you don't want to finish casting a solar spell in Lunar Eclipse because it doesn't snapshot um, the damage from your mastery uh, at the beginning of the cast, it snapshots it at the end of the cast. Alright, not when it hits the target by the way, it's when um, the cast ends. So you want to do something like this. Alright, if you're about to go into Lunar Eclipse, you want to pre-cast a Starfire. And the same thing is, if you are doing something like that, now I want to precast a Wrath, so when the cast ends, I'm already in Solar Eclipse, I'm getting my bonus from Mastery. Alright, that's pretty much what you want to do. Now, Starfall will be less of an issue once you get the Archimon Trinket, and at that point you will stop using Starfall, you will just use Star Search, and uh, I will talk about the Archimon Trinket later, alright. Um, but if you don't have the Archimon Trinket, uh, the general rule 
is um, two targets in solar, uh, three targets in solar, and two targets in lunar, and Starfall will win uh, against Star Search. Now that's not always the case. You shouldn't always just Starfall when you have two targets. All right, if you have two targets and one of them has high priority and needs to be killed, you should still use Star Search. All right, so. You have to decide, do I really want to push my single target damage and kill one of the adds, or do I just want to passively sort of AoE them with Starfall and not really focus my damage too much, alright, by spending my charges. That's pretty simple. Now, gearing and stat priorities are a big issue right now. There is a huge cluster thing on the internet where this side is telling me to go crit and then mastery and then haste and then multi-strike and then this side is telling me to go mastery and then haste honestly with the way DPS works and with the way gear is distributed and the different item levels in Hellfire Citadel as long as it doesn't have versatility it's good for you alright the stats for boomkins are pretty balanced with mastery of course being better so you generally want to go for mastery but after that it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter if it has higher item level, it has more intellect or it has more spell power and it's gonna be better for you, all right? And um, as far as sort of the um, gear list, you want to get an off piece, which is uh, your hands, which is your gloves from Archimond. You want to get those fell finger rune gloves because once again, they are higher item level and they have more intellect, more stamina, more haste, more mastery. Alright, so you want to get the head, shoulders, uh, chest piece and your legs uh, from your tier set and then you want to get the gloves off of Archimond as well as a weapon. Alright, pick whichever one you can, it doesn't really matter. The staff is slightly better because it does have mastery and mastery is our best stat, but you know, the offhand mace isn't that bad either. Now let's talk about the seed of creation. This trinket is simming very low because it doesn't have any passive stats, which means that, you know, every website ever made is telling you don't use this trinket. Use any other trinket but the Seed of Creation. And I actually disagree with that um, in terms of gameplay, right? The way Hellfire Citadel is and the way the bosses are is that, well, AoE is kind of a trap as long as it's not the, um, what is the robot boss that jumps out and creates portals and you have the ghosts fearing you their AOE is fine any other fight in there always has a priority add and melee are so good at cleaving currently because that's becoming a thing all right ranged deal with the priority stuff and melee sort of cleave everything they have good trinkets for it um, and their specs are just built around that um, this trinket does something awesome all right, you can go balls to the wall, just full on into one ad, and you can focus one ad and kill him as much as you can, and you will still cleave down everything else. All right, and that's why I really like this trinket. It's not in terms of just raw DPS. I don't really give a damn about that. It's more about this trinket does something awesome where you can still do some AOE. All right, with Starfall, and Starfall is amazing, but you are still focusing all your charges into single target and into killing very important adds. So for that reason, I will be picking this trinket up and I'll be using it because I think it's a really good trinket. On pure single target bosses like uh, Fell Lord uh, Zakun, I would probably use a different trinket and if you have the option, then uh, you can use a different trinket but for the general structure of the raid and for most of the fights I'll be using Seed of Creation alright because it just works with the way boss fights are nowadays where AoEing full on and sacrificing a lot of single target DPS is gonna hurt you in the long run and you might not meet a DPS check later on because of that so uh, for that reason, I will be picking up Seed of Creation, and I would advise you do as well. And if you just want to get it, you know, it's a fun trinket as well. So just get it for the fun factor. It's awesome to starve all the time, right? But if you're doing dungeons, please um, don't use the trinket, uh, Glyph of Untamed Stars or whatever it is. So that's gearing, that's start priorities and the rotation. Your opener is pretty simple. It's not that difficult, and there are 
many different ways to open as a boomkin on the internet. What I'm generally using is on sort of, uh, you know, you get a countdown. Can I get a DB, DBM pull 15? I cannot. <laughs> or is it pull 15? Oh, damn. There we go. There's pull 15. What I tend to do is to do incarnation, pot, and celestial alignment, and then throw in a star search. All right, that's the way I open. Some people see it as a as sort of a the wrong way to do things, but my pull damage isn't too bad. All right, um, it allows you to throw in a star search at and the star search land on zero, which is something you want to do. All right, you waste a little bit of incarnation, but it's not too bad. All right. Um, I am sort of around the ATK-ish mark uh, when I'm bursting full on. And that's without buffs, that's without bloodlust, without uh, uh, flask, without everything really. So ATK is not too bad and I found out that this is probably the best way to do things because you still have um, sort of two global cooldowns to move after the pull because you have to throw in the star search and then you have to put on your dots and you can move around, you can kind of establish the lovely spot you want to stay in and you want to do damage from. And I found out that that works much better for me. But um, if you fancy some different opening and you might think it's better, uh, you can use it and you can actually tell me so I can, you know, adjust to it and I can try it out. And maybe it will be better. But that's pretty much it. Now let's look at the talents. I use Displacer Beast on pretty much every fight because it's a blink. Um, and blink is awesome. The only downside of it is that it do it does throw you into cat form. But it's not too bad. Alright, you just jump in and then you just, you know, jump back into Moonkin. It's not too bad. I like it, you know. It allows me to get away from mechanics and things that might kill me very quickly. Uh, it allows me to jump over stuff, and it's just generally good. So I tend to use this placer beast almost all the time. Level 30, I don't think we need another button for healing, and Ysera's gift is just so good. If you're full on health, you're just helping out by healing random people every now and then. It's fine. Uh, level 45, I use Typhoon most of the time. Sometimes Mass Entanglement. Um, but Typhoon is good because it's pretty much an IOE interrupt. If you can knock it back, you can interrupt it. So, for instance, imps on uh, Zul Horak. If you get close enough so the Typhoon hits them, you can interrupt all the imps at once. And if you combine that with, like, mass grips and um, solar beam, you can pretty much spell lock them for quite a while when you do a mass grip. Um, then you throw in a Typhoon, and then you, I don't know, another DK throws in a Mass Grip, and then you throw in Solar Beam, and they're dead by then. So, it's, it's fantastic in my opinion. Uh, I really like Typhoon. And Mass Entanglement, when you need to control something, and you can root it, it's really good. And um, even if you're doing it on a single ad, you know, casting Entangling Roots is always worse than just pressing a button that's gonna root it instantly, in my opinion. Level 60, I tend to prefer Incarnation because it gives me on-demand burst every three minutes. So I can line it up with particular, particularly nasty ads or something. Or I can even line it up uh, with Nature's Vigil and do some decent of healing as a Boomkin. So I tend to prefer Incarnation. It also works on all the spell damage instead of just buffing your empowerments. So if you have to cleave or do some AoE or use Starfall every now and then, Incarnation is going to definitely win over Soul of the Forest. Level 75, Ursul's Vortex, once again for control, incapacitating roar, as I say in every single one of my guides for druids, is shit, because you can whiff with it, and it's only 10 yards, like 10 yards is nothing for a ranged DPS. Okay, and then we have Mighty Bash, nah, not really, uh, in this tier at least. Then level 90, I tend to prefer Nature's Vigil because, well, I can do healing by or off healing by doing damage and level 100 i tend to lean towards euphoria on everything except for council because once again you can do some serious aoe or uh, and also the uh, zul horak i also use bonds of power on zul horak but on most fights i prefer euphoria because it's better for a single target and even if you have to star for every now and then you still want to focus your damage on single target Right, on most fights, on almost all of them. You still want to focus that one important ad down. So I tend to use Euphoria for that. 
Now, glyphs, I use Stampeding Roar because without this glyph, Stampeding Roar is not very good anymore. All right, so just use that. I use Moon Warding because there is a lot of magic damage going on, so it gives me more health, which means I can survive something that I been, wouldn't have been able to survive with just more armor instead of health. So I like that. And Glyph of Rebirth, as a Resto Druid or a Boomkin or any other Druid, you are the combat reser. Get used to that. If you're a Boomkin in the raid and someone says Resurrect Billy, you are going to Resurrect Billy. It doesn't cost you anything, it's instant and you can glyph it so they are at 100% health. So you are the Resurrector. Alright, don't be like, well, the Warlocks can. No, they have to cast a Soul Stone. Well, the Death Knights can and, you know, no, just no. You are the Resurrector, just do it. It's not difficult, just resurrect them. You are the best at resurrecting. Other than that, I'm using Flapping Owl, of course. You know, the best glyph in the game, probably. Um, so I'm using Flapping Owl. I'm using Travel, which changes your travel form into pretty much a mount. It speeds it up uh, outside of raids and battlegrounds. And then Untamed Stars, which is something you want for raids, but be really careful. The, the trash in uh, Citadel is very packed, so... Once you start fall in the wrong place, you can probably wipe the entire group with it. All right, so be really careful with Starfall um, and the Glyph of Untamed Stars in the Citadel, all right? Just get into a corner or stay behind and just Starfall from there. All right, and that's pretty much it for this Boomkin guide. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.